Young American woman, Kayla Mueller. Kayla Mueller. The American aid worker, Kayla Mueller. Kayla Mueller. The American aid worker captured by ISIS. Kayla Mueller. You may recognize her name from being in the news in 2015 and 2016 after being captured by ISIS. Popular media outlets hailed her as a devoted humanitarian, American aid worker, or even a great young American. Yet I would submit that this is a disgrace on the part of all who tell her story in this manner. This is because it takes away from the profound legacy that Kayla, a 25-year-old girl, left for those who would listen to her story. If you are listening with children, you may want to pause at this point and listen to the rest of the video privately. Some of the things in Kayla's story may not be appropriate for younger audiences. That being said, I think that everyone can take notes at the selflessness and courage of Kayla Mueller. With that, let's begin. Kayla was born August 14th, 1988, and was raised in Prescott, Arizona, about an hour north of Phoenix. She taught herself multiple languages as well as how to write and play music, and she would frequently involve herself in helping troubled youth, military veterans, and Native Americans who were in need. In 2009, she earned her political science degree from Northern Arizona University and traveled to India, where she worked in an orphanage. In India, Kayla wrote, I find God in the suffering eyes reflected in mine. If this is how you are revealed to me, this is how I will forever seek you. Mueller returned home in 2011 to put in over 12-hour shifts in a treatment center and shelter for women affected by HIV and AIDS. After that, she decided to work in part of Francophone Africa, that is, the part of Africa that was previously colonized by the French and thus speaks French. In preparation for working in Africa, she then worked as an au pair in France to better learn the language, but in 2012, she ended up going to Turkey to work with the Syrian refugee crisis. While spending time in Turkey working with refugees, Kayla wanted to go help a hospital in need. She got in the car with an aid worker that was from Syria and began the journey to the hospital, and the hospital was shocked at her arrival. The land that they had passed through had an active civil war going on and was particularly dangerous for international workers. After finishing her work at the hospital, she was brought to a bus station so that she could go back to Turkey. However, the car that she took was ambushed and Kayla was abducted by ISIS militants. Kayla, a 25-year-old girl, was now a prisoner of the most dangerous and evil men alive. Her guards shaved her head and she was repeatedly beat, tortured, and abused in every way possible in the dark and dirty cell. Her fellow captives said that she never surrendered to hope, and that she selflessly put the welfare of fellow captives above her own, even when standing before the famous executioner Jihadi John to defend her faith. Julia, age 13, was one of the many Yazidi girls that was held captive with Mueller. Sharing the same mattress and cell, they became close to each other, and Julia thought of Kayla as her big sister. Julia also described painfully tight chains that they were forced to wear, but worst of all, how Kayla had been chosen by Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, to be violated several times a night for himself, after having her fingernails ripped from her hands. Julia said, when she was with us, she wanted to encourage us because of what also happened with us. Julia told Kayla that she wanted to escape and told Kayla that she would go with them. Kayla replied that she couldn't because she was an American and if she had escaped, they would do everything to capture Kayla again. Julia also said that, quote, she was very good to us. She gave us a piece of her clothes to cover our face and told us that if ISIS comes, you should cover your face with a burqa. You should cover your face from them. For 18 months, Kayla survived and endured the brutal conditions of being enslaved to ISIS. Kayla repeatedly tried to shield girls from the terrorists' abuse and violence, putting their lives above hers. 
Julia believes that Kayla sacrificed herself so that the escape of fellow captives like herself would not be jeopardized. Kayla died February 6, 2015, at the age of 26, at the brutal and wicked hands of Isis. Mueller's family received three photographs of her body, which had been brutally bruised and crushed. While initial reports indicated that she died in an airstrike, it appears that this was something that had been fabricated by ISIS leadership, and she was more likely killed by repeated blunt force trauma. Kayla, at the age of 26, was driven by her worldview to put herself in harm's way, to bear witness of Christ in the dark places of the world. Grounded by a biblical worldview, she traveled to Syria knowing the risks and dangers that would await her. This worldview included a promise of suffering, a call to action, and an eternal hope. The Apostle Paul promises suffering in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, saying that, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. Kayla clearly understood this. And we get this from a letter that was sent to her parents while she was in captivity, and it read, If you could say I have suffered at all throughout this whole experience, it is only in knowing how much suffering I have put you all through. I will never ask you to forgive me as I do not deserve forgiveness. I remember mom always telling me that all in all, in the end, the only one you really have is God. I have come to a place in experience where... In every sense of the word, I have surrendered myself to our Creator because, literally, there was no one else. By God, by your prayers, I have felt tenderly cradled in free fall. I have been shown in darkness light. I have learned that even in prison, one can be free. I am grateful. I have come to see that there is good in every situation. Sometimes we just have to look for it. Thank you for watching this episode of Overcomers, Christian Heroes, and Heroines. If you enjoy this type of content, please let us know in the comments and comment who you would like to have talked about next in this series. Here's a sneak peek in the form of a quote by who we will be discussing next. Until then, we'll see you next time.